Hey, what's up you guys? Thank you for watching this video. And this video I'm gonna talk about what is a trauma surgeon? Cause I get this question all the time. People sort of have an idea, but they're not exactly sure, number one, what you do. And number two, how you become a trauma surgeon. So we talk about both of those things. It's a little bit weird because trauma surgeons don't necessarily have a board certification, okay? So that's, that's a little bit different than say like a vascular surgeon or cardiothoracic surgeon. Uh, so most surgery specialties, or let's say a lot of surgery specialties, cardiothoracic, transplant, um, vascular, plastics, uh, colorectal, you first do a five year uh, general surgery residency, okay? So you med school, for college, four years, med school, four years, uh, residency, general, general surgery is usually five years. Now there's a couple changes to that, like plastics, they're starting to move to like a three and three situation. Um, vascular, they're trying to move that to, I think a three and three situation as well. But uh, many places are five year general surgery. Then you do a fellowship, you, you, know, you apply the whole rigor and roll again, and then you get into a fellowship and you do another two years. So say like vascular surgery is two years, uh, plastics I think is two years, sometimes three. Uh, there's some other fellowships like minimally invasive surgery, which is like a one year. Uh, breast fellowship is a one year. Surgical oncology, I think is a two year or three year. Cardiothoracic is generally about two year uh, fellowship. Trauma surgery, now I'm telling you all this because it's weird. Trauma is either a one year or a two year. So when you're a trauma surgeon, you first have to do general surgery. And then you do get a fellowship and you can do either a fellowship only in critical care, and you become board certified in critical care, but you don't become board certification certified in trauma surgery because there is no board certification in trauma surgery. So what people do is they get a two a two year fellowship. You do one year critical care fellowship, which is just in the ICU, and then it, you know some. It's like actually it's nine months of critical care and three months of uh, depends on what fellowship you go to, some of it is like you rotate around through cardiac and transplant and do, you know, do different things like that. Um, and then the second year uh, is trauma, where you're like the trauma attending, you kind of function as a junior attending. So you take, you're taking trauma call, you're usually, you know, the kind of the boss of the residence or whatever. And then also, of course, you answer to your attending. So that's the two year trauma fellowship. Um, but you only get the board certification in critical care and not trauma surgery. So <laughs> don't ask me. I think they're trying to make a board certification, but it's not done yet and whatever. So you'll find that a lot of trauma surgeons have done this two year fellowship and some of them have not. And some of them only focus on critical care but they like depending on your general surgery residency you may or may not see a lot of trauma so some smaller community hospitals you won't see a lot of trauma and so if you're a general if, if you do your general surgery uh, residency there and you don't see a lot of trauma then it's unlikely you're going to go into a one-year fellowship of critical care and then be like hired as a as a trauma surgeon, right? So uh, my situation is a little bit, it's neither of those. <laughs> I did I did a five year general surgery residency at, in Detroit uh, at Henry Ford Hospital. So it was a 900 bed hospital, 60 beds ICU. We had a lot of trauma there. So one of the main things we saw all the time was trauma. So uh, I, you know, felt like fairly comfortable with it by the time I finished. Obviously I don't have a fellowship in it. And so you're not seeing it every day, but I saw quite a bit of it. Um, so, you know, a lot of guys like in my situation might do critical care and then work as a, like a level two in a level two center or a level one center, which we'll talk over in a different video. If you're going to work in a level one center, by the way, you need a critical care fellowship um, uh, to do to be like a trauma surgeon. Um, I do acute care surgery, which is a little bit different. I'll talk about that, but it's they don't require you to have a critical care because a lot of these ICUs uh, have a special team for their critical care. And I, you know,
know, because of my residency, we did a ton of critical care. I did like literally every day critical care. So I had the numbers and the experience and I showed that, you know, to my team and, you know, my employer, my boss, that I wasn't an idiot in the ICU. And so they're like, okay, you can take care of your patients in the ICU. So it's a little bit, you know, dynamic, let's put it that way right now. So it's essentially like, if you're comfortable, you have enough experience, you can do it. If you're not, and you don't have enough experience, then you can't really do it without a fellowship. Does that make sense? Um, so the other thing I want to talk to you about is, that's, a, that's how you become a trauma surgeon. So there's a, there are a bunch of different ways to do it. What I would recommend if I was going to do it again, and I knew I wanted to be, do go into trauma, I didn't know this really, you know, kind of at the end of my uh, residency, I didn't really think I was going to go into acute care surgery and trauma and stuff. I thought I was going to do like general surgery, uh, just um, just elective general surgery. And so I, I said, oh, I don't need a, I don't need a fellowship, like whatever. But I ended up coming back to it uh, for various reasons, and that's in my other videos. So what I would recommend, if you know you want to go into trauma. Um, I would recommend doing the two-year fellowship. Uh, I would just do five years. Don't do any research. You don't need to do research because nobody. It's, trauma fellowships are fairly easy to get, and um, because it's a hard-ass job, <laughs> and uh, and then just do the two-year fellowship. You'll be way ahead of everybody. And then if they ever decide they want to do uh, a board certification, then you'll probably be eligible for that board certification. So that's what I would recommend. Um, you know, if you do, if you're in a level one trauma center for your residency and you want to do just a critical care fellowship, I think that's probably reasonable too. If you want to be the director of a trauma program, especially in a level one center, uh, you should probably do the two year fellowship. Uh, you can probably, you can, you can be a director of a trauma program in uh, like a level two center if you just have a critical care. Uh, fellowship and not the whole the two-year kind of deal okay so it's a quagmire of disastrous fucking spider web but anyway that's that's what it is so the second thing I want to talk about in this video was um, what does a trauma surgeon do so um, basically depending on your hospital and your you know team and your partners and stuff like that you will, there's a couple different ways to do it. And most people right now are doing, um, like if they're in the level one center, there's a bunch of trauma surgeons. You take like six to 10 days of call per month. So then when you're on call, you do a 24, 24 hour call generally. It's, you know, 7 a.m. or 6 a.m., usually 7 a.m. to 7, 7 a.m. right the next day. And then um, you may or may not go home right away. So in our, my residency, the trauma surgeons would, um, they also did general surgery, okay, acute general surgery. So we lumped everything together. Uh, and this is a little bit different in, a, in different places. But so at Henry Ford, at the time when I was there, we lumped everything together to as uh, emergency general surgery and trauma surgery. So that trauma surgeon took both of those uh, during that 24 hours. Okay, and the next time, and the following day, they would pass it off and they would say, okay, well, uh, we have, you know, we, we have like three appies, you know, three appendix to do uh, this next day while you're on call because I'm done being on call and then maybe that person had to do clinic or maybe that person had to do like elective surgery. So you may end up with that scenario, but because all they're, they're also critical care certified, they might do, they might round in the ICU that week. Okay, so if you're in, in course is different in all places but say well, in our place the critical care all the trauma surgeons were critical care certified and so they do a week of critical care rounding on the ICU patients during that week you may have also um, a call or two of trauma so that's where it gets uh, a little crazy and then you might have clinic too right because you have post-op patients and stuff like that and, and maybe some pre-op patients and uh, in your clinic. So, you know, one guy might have every day rounding in the ICU in the morning. So you may go 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. or whatever it is to, you know, noon rounding. Uh, you may have elected cases. <clears throat> I think they try not to do that when you're rounding that week. Um, and then you may
may have like a day, you know, half a day of afternoon clinic or something like that. Um, in addition, maybe like Wednesday and Saturday, you take call. You know, so that's uh, like a super busy week. Um, it's not always like that everywhere, but uh, at Ford, like at the time, we were something like that. What I do is different, and what I'm at a level two center, and we generally do either 12 on, 12 off, that's ours, or 24 seven uh, for a period of time, like five days, seven days or whatever, depending on the hospital and how busy they are. If you're super busy, typically you don't do 24 seven because you know, if you're gonna be up all night, you can't be up all night every night uh, for seven days, that's stupid. So the hospitals that are less busy, that have less trauma in the middle of the night, uh, you can do 24 seven and you have PAs to help you out in the daytime. And then the other hospitals that are super busy in the, in, at night, uh, they may have a trauma surgeon for 12 hours during the day, 7A to 7P, and then from 7P to 7A. And then a lot of those places that are really busy like that, they may have PAs unless they have a residency where they have uh, residents to help you out as well. So that's what I do. I go back from uh, one hospital is less busy in the middle of the night uh, and we don't do general surgery every day. So we just do trauma. And then we'll take like, maybe maybe I'll take like six days of total trauma call, or total general surgery call for the entire month. So maybe I'll take like six days of general surgery call for the entire month, uh, but I'm taking trauma call every day that I'm on. Does that make sense? So that's a little bit different than the other situation where those guys were taking um, trauma and general surgery every time they were on. So that's, um, I think, I hope that makes sense. Um, I didn't really talk about the surgeries we do at all. So let's talk about the surgeries real quick and what tr trauma surgeons do. And so most places, it is lumped together as you are a general surgeon and you're a trauma surgeon. So trauma in general, you do less operations. Like as time goes on, we figured out that, you know, opening people less is probably better for a lot of different scenarios. And there's different techniques like minimally invasive stuff and like, you know, uh, percutaneous drainage from radiologists and stuff like that, that we can do a lot less surgery, it ends up being a lot less morbid for the patient. So we figured those, uh, things out and so overall trauma is less uh, operating um, as time goes on it seems so that's why a lot of trauma surgeons also do general surgery because if you don't especially like if you're a level two center and it's not really busy there's not not a lot of uh, penetrating injury around then you won't operate very much and you won't do anything and so uh, you got to keep your skills somehow but um, a lot of the general surgery and a lot of the emergency general surgery and the trauma surgery are essentially one and the same. And so we typically do mostly abdominal surgery. So we have uh, consultants for a lot of the other operations. So like vet, if it's a, you know, an arm where it's a vascular injury or something like that, then some trauma surgeons will do that themselves if they feel comfortable. And some of them will say, we, we you know, want a vascular surgeon for that. Um, you do do, uh, chest surgery depending on your comfort level and what you're used to and what what um, institution you're at so like if someone's gets shot in the chest and you know you put a chest tube in and a bunch of blood comes out and you think it's a bad injury in the lung or the, uh, the blood vessels then the trauma surgeon typically does that the uh, neck is the same way if you have you know somebody gets shot in the neck uh, a lot of the trauma surgeons will do that themselves uh, some will, uh, some won't and they'll consult or have you know a vascular surgeon or uh, maybe a cardi cardiac surgeon because they also do uh, blood vessel operations uh, but uh, so the belly like spleen injuries will do splenectomies will will take out all the bowels will uh, fix all the bowels if they have if they rupture from um, motorcycle accidents or motor vehicle accidents or uh, gunshot wounds, uh, kidneys, even the kidney, if it's kidneys bleeding real bad or something like that from a gunshot or a, um, a blunt injury, then we'll take that that, that out. Um, so typically like you want to, th almost like a, what I was told is like Bermuda, uh, the t-shirt and Bermuda shorts, like that's kind of where the trauma surgeon works. And if it's, if it's distal to that, um, either in the limbs or, or I mean the upper limbs or lower limbs, then generally you might have like a vascular surgeon uh, do that. We don't do any of the bones. The bones are orthopedics. We don't really do the brain. That's for 
uh, neurosurgeons. And um, I mean, that's a obviously that's a quick and dirty kind of thing I just told you, but um, that gives you an idea, I hope, of <laughs> what the trauma surgeon does. Uh, it's it's fluid, uh, definitely with each institution and each person and each comfort level, it's uh, a little bit fluid. So that uh, is my spiel on trauma surgeons and what we do and uh, who does what and how you do it and how you get there. All right. I hope that help makes sense. I hope that clears up some stuff for you guys that especially the medical students and residents are not sure, you know, like how exactly you get there. Uh, if you like these videos, subscribe to my channel. That's, that's, that'd be awesome. And I'll send you some more. And if you wouldn't mind liking each video, and if you like it, of course, if you don't like it, don't give me the thumbs up. Just comment down. I mean, don't give me the thumbs down. Just comment on down there like, hey, I don't like this video because it's too long and you ramble and you t say too many cuss words or something like that. Don't give me the thumbs down. It's bullshit. Anyway, um, and share it with a friend if you want. And that'd be awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.